And so a company doesn't have to do anything. They just have to point their leads to us. We develop the scripts with them and we do everything else. And we show them our platform, show them the conversations as they're happening in real time. And so they don't have to trust, they can verify. Welcome to Uptech Report. This is our Applied Tech series. Uptech Report is sponsored by TerraLeap. Learn how to leverage the power of video at terraleap.io. Today, I'm joined by my guest, David Tao, who's based in San Diego, California. He's the CEO at Verse.io. Welcome, David. Good to have you on. Thank you for having me. Now, Verse.io is a conversion platform that turns leads into sales-ready opportunities. So we're really in the marketing automation topic here, and you guys are focused on mid-market enterprise companies. I got that correct? Correct. So help me understand, let's just look at the, the industry that you're serving. What's the problem? Like, what are they actually facing that you're, you're aim at, at solving? So, so the biggest problem is that there's been a, a huge shift in consumer behavior and, and really how consumers want to communicate with businesses, which is more and more so over, over text. You know, gone are the days that, you know, where, where, you know, you just answer phone calls randomly from numbers you don't know. Uh, emails go to junk and, and it's just been, you know, your inbox is flooded with emails now. The consumers like expecting to be able to just text with their, 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 whoever they want to work with. Yeah. You know, if you're a consumer and you're going on Zillow or any site looking for information, um, the last thing you want is just a bunch of phone calls right afterwards. What you want is just to get a quick answer and get to the right person that can help you out. The right agent, the right lender, the right uh, anyone at the company, the right person. And you just kind of want to get there quickly and conveniently. Um, and today, you know, the way most businesses operate is they generate high volumes of leads, but but a few things happen. One is in, is businesses who generate these high volumes of inbound leads um, do a pretty terrible job of following up. Um, they don't respond quickly. Um, they don't respond to about 45% of all leads. They don't respond... Uh, at night or on weekends, most of the time, when when about forty percent of leads today come af- after hours, we're in a twenty four seven world where you're not just looking at Zillow between eight and five. You know, in fact, at home on your couch while you're watching TV, you're like, mm, uh, I want to look at this. Night. Yeah. Late at night, right? Um, you know, so 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 you know, and, and and all of these things that people do when they fill out forms, when they want services, when they're inquiring about different products or services, um, it's all hours of the day. Um, but businesses are not staffed 24 seven and it's all about speed to lead. We know that if you, if you don't respond to leads quickly, they move on, they find a competitor or they forget and lose interest. Um, now, we also know that you're particularly yeah. focused on the, the real estate I- industry. Is that correct? We started in the real estate industry, um, working with big, uh, with, you know, we work with a lot of big brokerages, lead gen companies, CRMs and platforms, uh, search portals, referral okay. networks. Okay platform that you have builders, is is translatable to other builders. industries. Yeah, we started in real estate uh, a couple of years ago. We expanded uh, and evolved into mortgage as well. And today we're powering some of the largest mortgage companies in the country um, for, for purchase loans, for refi. Um, and last year, early last year, we expanded into home services. And so all things adjacent kind of, you know, around the home. So now we're working with sol- huge solar companies, big uh, home services companies, um, roofers, plumbers, turf, home remodel, um, security. So, so it's been you know really fascinating to kind of see the evolution of, of where we've gone. But, but the the problem that we're solving, just to go back to that, the problem that we're solving is not a real estate problem or a mortgage or home services leads problem. It's an internet leads problem. Uh, leads come in twenty four seven around the clock for education companies, for healthcare, for insurance, for any industry. And businesses don't have a proper way to follow up automatically and consistently with these prospects 24-7 and nurture them long-term. And most importantly, to communicate with them on their time and their terms, how they prefer, which is over SMS, over anything else. And so what Verse does is we're really enabling um, all of those businesses. What we do is we become an extension of their team and we become the outreach team who, who engages all of these prospects via SMS immediately and 24-7 following up, nurturing automatically, um, and allowing consumers to communicate quickly over SMS so that we can qualify the prospect and set up an appointment, book a demo, set up a callback time, et cetera, for, for the business. So it's this, this lead management and follow-up that, that you're, you're saying that 
the way consumers have grown and adopted there, it's changed. It's not necessarily email or phone call. It's, it's text messages and businesses aren't keeping up with it or, or rather it's, they're still overwhelmed or aren't responding in the way that consumers want. Yeah. You know, and, and businesses just aren't set up that way. You know, today when, when, when a business generates, you know, a thousand leads, they're just sent, you know, they're sending those to their team to, to reach out. Right. Um, and some of them have SDR teams. Some of them just have AEs or sales reps that are just reaching out and chasing those leads down. But the biggest problem between marketing and sales is that, you know, marketing is tasked with generating all of these leads. They toss them over the fence to sales teams and are frustrated that sales teams aren't able to respond to those leads quickly. They're doing other things. They're on demos. They're not working that day. They only work till five, whatever it is. They don't text. They, they you know, it's very inconsistent. And if you send a thousand leads to, to, to 10 different, you know, sales people to respond to, you're going to get completely different uh, kind of formats of engagement, right? They're going to respond in all different ways, use different scripts, different cadences. Some might follow up twice. Some might follow up once. Some might follow up none. It, it's just super inconsistent. And so by, by really bringing that and operationalizing that into a consistent, efficient manner with, with, with Verse or a company like us, we can really, you know, optimize that and create a consistent funnel conversion. So, so marketing teams are frustrated that salespeople don't respond quickly. They don't follow up long-term. They give up easily. Um, but salespeople are equally frustrated that they're being flooded with leads that they can't get a hold of, that they have to chase down. And sometimes when they finally get a hold of them, they realize they're not even qualified or the right kind of prospect. And so that is why the lead qualification is such an important piece of the funnel um, it, that is that is where we focus is how do you actually engage in, and, and qualify prospects to turn them into sales ready opportunities? It's not just about I got a hold of them. Here you go, salesperson. It's I got a hold of them. I asked them a, a couple of questions to qualify them, make sure they meet the criteria. And now you're you're being teed up with a with a warm opportunity. So it's really moving that that lead qualification to the text SMS environment or medium. That's what Correct. you're suggesting needs to happen. Correct. Okay. Now for you, um, how, take me back. Like, when did this all begin? Did you just like wake up one day like, all right, let's create an SMS lead uh, uh, qualification platform? Every boy's dream. Yeah. <laughs> Some of my friends wanted to be firemen and astronauts. I and just you wanted want to be an SMS platform to help businesses engage with their prospects. <laughs> um, all right. Well, take me back. Take I, me back. After graduating from, from UCLA, I, I got really interested in, in, in development and, and in real estate. And I wanted to do big things in real estate. I knew I wanted to. And so to start, I got my license and I became an agent to really learn from the ground up. Um, and a couple of years in, I, I became the top selling agent in, in the office that I was in at a boutique brokerage in San Diego. And I decided to become a broker myself and actually start to bring on agents into my own brokerage which I did. Uh, so I, I launched my brokerage. I, I had maybe about a dozen agents. So I wasn't, you know, a huge broker, but you were feeling good. You're, like, you're feeling progress. But about a dozen or so uh, kind of realtors that hung, hung their license under my brokerage. And as most brokers do uh, or should, I started generating leads for my team to feed them, right? How to, old to were you at this point? Uh, Must have been 27 or so. Okay. Okay. 27. Um, I shaved just for this. So I know I look younger, but um, so, so I started buying leads. I, I, I was paying a lot of money to Zillow, to realtor.com, to homes.com, to Trulia. I was spending money to drive traffic to my site and fill, get form fill outs there. I was generating, generating hundreds of leads uh, a month, sending them to my agents. And then I would follow up with, with the agents and say, hey, how did it go with these 50 leads I gave you this week? And the responses were all over the place, as you can imagine. It was, oh, I, I, I called and I left a voicemail. So we'll see if they call me back. Oh, oh yeah, I have to call them. Oh, I sent them an email. Um, oh, I, I faxed them. I don't know if they actually faxed, but I wouldn't be surprised. That's how ridiculous it was that, 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 that basically – it was one attempt, maybe two, but it was, it was so inconsistent. And I realized that, and, and then by the way, I started calling some of the leads myself just to see what was going on. Like, are the leads junk? What's going on? Leads, leads were, were good. They just weren't getting uh, uh, contacted. Um, and so uh, uh, they were getting in touch 
Um, and so if, if you're a consumer and you're getting phone calls from numbers you don't know, you just don't answer them anymore. 87%, 87% of consumers do not pick up the phone anymore from numbers they don't know. And so you can't expect to, to have great engagement as a strategy with phone calls anymore. Um, but, but check this out. 90% of all text messages are read within three minutes of receiving them. 98% of text messages are read overall. Compare that to 13% of phone calls. Like it's just seven times, six, seven times higher with text. So it just doesn't compare. Um, and so, so the, the problem um, w- was, was very clear to me. I was spending a lot of money on leads, sending them to my realtors, and they had a really hard time getting hold of these leads. And so my, my brother and I, my brother was kind of a technologist and, and, and in the marketing world, and I was more in the real estate world. He's very heavy in marketing and marketing tech and automation. And he said, let's, sol- let's solve this. Um, and so our first you know, crack at it was, hey, and, and, you know, let's create our own lead gen service that generates the leads just like anyone can by driving Google ads to, to a landing page and capturing information. But instead of, of people interested in buying a home in Houston and in Miami and in everywhere. So we did that. But instead of just sending those leads cold, as soon as someone fills out a form, like, here you go, realtor, here's, you know, $50 lead. Instead of doing that, we would ourselves engage and qualify that prospect first. So we would do all the follow-up, multiple attempts, phone, text, email, um, all of it. Um, And only once we got a hold of someone and qualified them and deemed them, you know, a a qualified opportunity, only then would we refer them and, and hand them off to the realtor. And so we really pioneered this concept of qualified appointments, qualified leads. Um, and Over what of, period did that about, take to, for you to, to, to really iterate that and build that out? You know, quite, quite, quite a bit. You know, at first we were just kind of making more phone calls than anyone, right? Um, and, and, and by the way, our, our third brother, our youngest brother had just graduated from college from, from Michigan and started working with us. And he was our concierge, basically. You know, we were small operation at the time. It's basically the three of us and like two two salespeople, and and you're just like manually calling people, like manually calling and texting manually. Manually um, texting, okay. We can handle that lead volume at the time, you know, with with one person, not even twenty four seven, you know. So that was the beginning of it. But we 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 are the conversion rates tripled, tripled through you know threefold. So from from leads that we were sending to realtors before. If they were closing 1% of them, they were actually selling a home to 1% of them, which is about the average in the industry. With us, it was 3 to 5%, depending on the market. And it was a dramatically higher rate. And that's because we got a hold of the warm prospects quicker before they found another realtor. And we built trust earlier, um, even though the journey was long to buy a home. And that's really, really important is to be able to to build trust or, you know, early in a customer journey, that's when you're going to build the loyalty. Were you like, what drove you to, to just keep pushing on this? Is, is it just an innate curiosity of how can I increase these conversions? Are you just like a conversion a passion is like, ah, oh, I just want to increase conversions. Like, is that what you are? You, uh, I, you know, I was certainly always entrepreneurial and in, in trying to think of the next big idea. Um, and I saw this as a huge opportunity because there's, you know, a million and a half realtors, and they're all buying leads, spending $15 billion a year on leads. And most leads never even, they can't even get hold of them. And so I, I knew this was a huge opportunity as a business. And, and that's why we went the lead gen route. But what we quickly realized was that, you know, our, our customers, our own, you know, realtor customers were saying to us, by the way, that company was called My Agent Finder. So that first iteration of what Burt's became. A manual <laughs> manual way of finding the leads for you, my agent finder. My agent would you finder, think? right? You you, yeah. you go on Google, you type in best realtors in in Orlando, and our ad pops up. You go to it, you fill out a form on myagentfinder.com, right? And so, and and so over time, it, we were partnering with realtors in every market. Um, and so over time, these realtors they started saying to us, they said, "We we love this service. It's amazing. I never get a lead that I have to chase down." I never get a lead saying, why the hell are you calling me? Who are you? I never get a lead that's just renting or wasting my time. Um, everyone's always ready to go and like friendly because they already had that qualification conversation. 
And they said, this is amazing, but you're just one small lead source. Um, you know, you're, you're sending me five or 10 leads a month, which are amazing, but I'm getting another hundred leads a month from my Zillow and my site and my realtor.com and my other sources. And they said, can we funnel all of our leads to you for you to engage and qualify all of our leads from any source? And so that's when the big light bulb went off and we realized, you know, instead of just being another lead source in a jungle of, you know, kind of, you know, Zillow's out there, why not, why not take the magic layer, the secret sauces in how we engage and qualify prospects, you know, after a lead is generated. So why don't we create a platform that enables anyone to connect any lead source, no matter where, no matter the industry over time, um, and allow us to be the platform that really focuses on helping all realtors engage their leads from any lead source. This one you started to think about, okay, now I need to really emphasize or look more at technology, like the technology Absolutely. aspect versus people. That's when we became a real technology company. We rebranded. We actually sold that lead gen company uh, very successfully because um, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was a great business. Um, it was generating a lot of money. We, we sold it and we used that to fuel the growth in agentology. What, what, um, what year was this that the transition happened? Maybe 20, 2018 or so, 2017 or 18. How long did you did you spend on that first portion? Then you'd start to realize, hey, we, we got a whole. Is that, yeah, it was about two, three years. Two, we were running years. the lead gen, um, okay. growing it from one market to, to 70, eventually 70 big markets nationwide. Um, and we became one of the bigger players there. Um, and then you sell it. We sold it. We flipped it all into building out the technology, hiring tons of engineers and product experts and people, AI um, you know, experts and, and to come join our team and build out what became agentology, which was the predecessor to verse, um, which was basically verse, but just for real estate. Right. Um, and so our thought was, Hey, we're doing really well with realtors. Let's, let's create the service for the real estate industry, start working with much bigger players, um, in real estate and, and being the kind of the ology, kind of the science of lead conversion, right. For agents. Now, now this this trajectory of all right, let's let's just build a technology platform. This will be easy. Uh, was it all smooth sailing? Of course, um, no. Uh, no. What no. were some of the initial challenges and like hurdles you had to overcome? Well, anytime you have, it's always easy to do something small, but to scale it is is tricky, and especially with technology and telephony and texting and SMS, um, it's a whole other world to you know, text from one number as opposed to generating and provisioning thousands of phone numbers and being able to operate that at scale, um, handling AI to, 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 to handle some of the conversation for you so that you can run an efficient process. Being able to staff 24 seven, you know, uh, is tricky. It's trickier when you're small than when you're big, because when you're big, it, there's always leads coming in at two in the morning when you're small, you got someone there, but just in case the lead comes in at 2 a.m., right? Because How did you, you handle that? Did you, so, is it like as a balance of cash flow there of like, all right, having enough people, but when you're too small, what did you do? Yeah, no, so it was, it was very tricky, you know, and we had to really get good at workforce management optimization and, and like figure out shift schedules that, you know, we were heavy during the day, certain hours of the day are heavier than others. You know, 10 a.m. was busier than 8 a.m. Pacific but we're 24 seven and all coasts. So we had to find the, the heavy spots and, and staff and like bulk, bulk the staff up and then narrow it down. There were times when someone called in sick and, and my brother and I would hop on at 11 PM to handle texts, you know, just when we were small, you know, we didn't want to miss, miss the beat. Um, so a lot Billy, of that, you know, yeah. Billy, that automation portion, you say bringing in folks that are our uh, engineers that focus on AI, was that, was that pretty simple? Like, oh, hey, you know about AI, come on in here and let's start building something. You know, a, a, AI, AI gets overused quite a bit. And, um, you know, it, the way we look at it, it's, it, we, we've built a lot of real conversational proprietary AI, but we also leverage a ton of just machine learning and, and regex and other forms of structuring data, which allow us to um, basically create you know, response cadences and, and learn and, and, and allow the machine to kind of learn on its own to a degree without it being, you know, alien AI, right? Um, so th there's a degree of all of it. Where we leverage a lot of AI, for example, is, is not, it's not just in the conversations themselves, but in figuring out 
when is the best time to follow up with someone who's unresponsive? What time of day? What day? What kind of messages to use to automatically be A-B testing and learning long-term um, what works? Um, and one of the things that, that we did with Verse, what makes us really kind of unique and, and, and special um, is that, you know, we, we truly believe as a company that, it, it, you know, humans alone won't solve this. Technology alone won't solve this. Humans alone, which is how businesses have been going about this for years, is a, a very inconsistent process. It's an expense. It's expensive. Um, it's hard to do 24-7. Um, and it takes a lot of training and a lot of management. Um, tech alone is inauthentic. It's limited. Um, and, and what we believe is that to create the most authentic connections at scale between businesses and, and their consumers is, is bridging the two, br bridging the best of both. And so what Agentology did and, and evolved into Verse was to, to really focus our technology on launching an, an authentic conversation and starting to carry that forward. But as soon as someone is engaging, a prospect is engaging and having a conversation back with us, being able to loop in a real human from our team to carry that conversation forward to fruition and get an appointment set. Because we really believe that a bot is a very inauthentic, uh, disloyal experience. You don't mind missing a demo that you booked on a bot. But when you talk to a human and they talk to you and they had a little empathy and they laughed with you or whatever, they thank you for your service, any, you know, anything that makes it any more personal, um, the engagement rates shoot up and so do the appointment show rates, et cetera. You know, pe people show up and because they feel the that the company is there, that it cares for them and that's a bigger company and that, and that there's more well, attention. This always, or is this through, through discovery or, or did you just have this innate knowledge that this, this is how people operate and we need to, how we, this is how we need to build. Well, we, we, I think from our, our DNA has always been uh, fr from our mission from day one has been to create the most authentic keyword, authentic connections between businesses and, and their consumers. And we think the way to do that is, you know, humans, humans. Yeah. That, that combination of, of the two. You now for you and a connection with a bot. Um, yeah, and if people you, like, yeah, who cares about you should get some help. Um, but, you know, but, and, and not, not to, you know, poo poo on bots, like they, they serve their purpose. And, and if your leads cost you 50 cents, maybe that's a good way to go. Cause you're just like churning through a million kind of junk leads and, and you don't want to spend the resources. But when you're spending 50 or a hundred dollars per lead, um, which, which, which most real businesses do, you know, having a human in a loop is the most impactful way to, to, to drive results from those leads. Now for you to communicate the value of your product to your customers, starting with realtors. And now since you rebrand, you've gone into to brokers and you said the, the ancillary services that surround real estate, has it been easy to communicate the value of it? Um, I, I think so. Um, you know, everyone, everyone we speak to just immediately recognizes a couple of things, uh, you know, and, and they, every business is recognizes that, that they don't do a good job of following up with their leads. Almost every business is just admits that to us, which is why they like do a demo with us. They, and they, we ask them, well, what, what, why are you interested in birds? And they go, our team sucks at following up with leads. We're only getting a hold of 20% of our leads, you know? Um, and I know we could be doing more and I got this one guy, but you know, it's like, and, and, and secondly, they all recognize that we don't have to argue this point. They all recognize that SMS is, is the way to go here. Um, and they, they, none of them have the tech or the people to man that. Um, so it's and, not and trying to convince them of, of you, you need to be using SMS. It's more of like, they just need to be choosing a platform and they realize that they need help and follow up. So it's more like, all right, can, uh, can I afford you? Can, can, will this work in our business? Is that where the com every conversation yeah. leads? Absolutely. And then the other really key thing that Burst brings to the table is we do this for you. It's not like we're some platform and we go install this in your Salesforce and now your salespeople can log into Salesforce and text. That doesn't solve the problem because there's still people with schedules and, and, and other things that they're doing and they're not going to automatically follow up with people over text for six months just because like in Salesforce, there's like a widget that they can text from. It just doesn't, it's not practical. And so what we developed is proprietary 
super AI powered, you know, contact system that we can use at scale with our own people that are trained to use our own platform. And so a company doesn't have to do anything. They just have to point their leads to us. We develop the scripts with them and we do everything else. And we show them our platform, show them the conversations as they're happening in real time. And so they don't have to trust, they can verify. And There's it's really, transparency. Really important, really important to us to have transparency so that, so that there's trust. That, that's what builds the trust. What would you say has contributed the most to your growth so far? For growth? Mm-hmm. I, I would say it's moving more and more upstream um, to work with larger businesses. When we started, we were working with, with realtors, you know, one realtor at a time. And over time, we really evolved to, to work with larger you know, brokerages that have hundreds of agents, platforms that have thousands of agents, um, search portals that have millions of consumers that are searching every day. Um, and, and just the scale, it's easier to work with these big companies in a way um, because the problems are even bigger for them um, and much more of a business concern because that's their entire business is selling leads. And so um, when we can help, their biggest reason for customers churning, a, a Zillow loses agents because their agents don't follow up with the leads very well, right? And so if we can help Zillow engage the leads ahead of time before they ever come to a realtor, they solve that problem. And and churn drops dramatically for those businesses. Are you starting to then, would you, do you use the word white labeled? Or are you part of the process at Visible or not? But both, both. So, you know, um, if a big solar company needs help, they just hire us, right? Um, when we're engaging their, their, their solar buyer that filled out a form on their site, we're saying we're a member of that solar company, not Verse, right? They've never heard of Verse. Um, so it's always kind of white label in that regard. But with a lot of platforms, we white label our service directly in so that they can offer a follow-up add-on or service directly. So if you're a big lead generator, now you can offer a concierge service that they can brand however you want. We power the entire thing. We have really robust uh, integrations with all the all the CRMs and platforms, API docs, open API, robust Zapier, a lot of capabilities. One of your main value points is, is this combination, which you were talking about a little bit earlier, of technology, using technology, as well as people. You're actually providing the people, the manpower, actual humans, to do a lot of the work, that human connection. Managing people, though, and scaling people, that's hard as a tech company. How have you solved that challenge of scaling the people side as well as the tech? Yeah, it's a great question. So we've hired really great people who ran huge call centers, kind of more old school, traditional, which is what we need to staff correctly, but, but, but also that have a modern approach because what's really cool about our platform is, you know, it, it, we use AI to, to make our humans superhuman. And so that, you know, and so our, our contact system is very different than anything anyone's ever seen. When a, when a, when a, when one of our verse concierges is logged on and man in, in responding to leads, our AI is even like suggesting what to say. And so it's very different than kind of the burnout call center world where they're outbound calling all day long and just robo dialing and just all that crazy stuff. That's not our world. It's similar, but what we do is we actually only respond to inquiries. And so our conversations, um, our conversations go much better. We're not cold calling people. We're responding to inquiries. And so people are very receptive and they, and they respond when you actually respond through SMS. You know, people respond very, very well. You don't get and people saying, buzz off, never call me again, take me off your list, right? They just filled out a form right. and ask for you to call or to contact them. So with... with what I'll say is, and just to answer your question more directly, but, but the reason I mentioned that is we have a very different culture. Our people are, are happy, happy contact center people. They're happy. They're having great conversations. They're quick conversations and they're handed off a lot of them over text. So there's not kind of burnout with phone all day long. And so we've hired people who have been with us four years later are some of our managers and directors today that have come up. And, and so one of the biggest problems that you know, the call center world faces is a ton of attrition in, in their workforce. We have people who are referring friends in um, because we have a happy workforce. We pay people, people well. We have 100% of our employees receive stock options, um, healthcare, 
benefits, 401k, all this stuff. And, and we treat our people really, really well. On top of that, um, you know, we've been able to create really good incentives, transparency, and a culture. You know, right after this, we have an all hands company meeting where, where all of our team members join. I, I have a, a, a bi monthly call. I give the update, the state of the union, revenues, how we're doing, very transparent. So we have a very different culture here that's more like a tech company with that aspect. But we have just as many engineers and product people as we have concierges. How big, how big is the team overall? O- over 100 people now. Wow. Okay. Um, and this, this combination of, <laughs> of, use, of people using the technology to actually assist them is interesting. Your, your prompting of what they even should say using the technology, that you, the platform that you have using AI. How, conversations-wise, percentage of people are doing the text versus actually on a phone, what's that yeah. ratio? So across the millions and millions of conversations that we launch every year, over 80% prefer to text. Um, and it's only about, you know, like 18 or 17% who will respond to the text and say, call me. Okay. Like, but, but because we texted them, they actually said, call me. They wouldn't have picked up the phone necessarily. Right. Cause they didn't know what it was, but you get a text and it says, I'm David here with blank, blank solar. Just got your inquiry is now a good time for, for a quick call or do you prefer to text? That's a very typical opening SMS for us is engage the consumer, give them context and relevancy to what they just inquired about so they know what it's about and then offer to call or text. It's about giving the consumer choice. And so um, 80% plus say text is better for me now. I'm at work, I'm here, I'm there every time. Um, and then the few people who say, call me, they say, call me over text and, or they'll say, call me in an hour or call me tomorrow at one. And we do, and we'll call them. So we also call, but, but as a response to someone asking for that, and then check this out of the people who say, call me when we call them, they pick up the phone 94% of the time, which is just the flip of, of just cold calling which only 13% of people answer. So 94 or 13, which one's higher? So it's just a, a no brainer. The yeah. best part about what we do um, is it's measurable. You know, SEO and other services take a really long time to see results and you hope that's what worked or that's, what, it's a little vague. Um, with us, it's, it's night and day, like, you know, no pun intended because, you know, night and day, they can see the results. Um, as soon as they, they, they start sending leads our way, within days, they have enough leads in the system that they could just see the engagement rate and start to see all the conversations, read the conversations that we're having. And this beautiful interface that shows conversations, they could sort them by qualified, by all the stuff. It's like a Google Analytics for, for your lead conversion. And, and they just immediately see the lines. They get, they get, and so they get our it. average customer, our average customer more than doubles um, the lead volume that they send us just in their first year with, with a verse. So they might start off sending us say a thousand leads a month and they immediately see so much success that they start buying more leads to send our way and double and double that. The future. Let's look at the future here. Uh, what, first off, what do you see the future of, of the company of where you guys are headed? What can you share of the roadmap? So, you know, we're really excited about, about a few things. Um, First off, you know, we're just scratching the surface in the verticals that we're in today, but really the platform is, is a flexible framework that works for anything. Um, and we've already started piloting insurance company customers, healthcare, um, SaaS companies, other kinds of lenders, financial, financial advisor companies, other financial services, um, education companies. And so the, the, the future is, is really unlimited. It's a verse for X, for anything, right? Any, any business who has a lot of inbound leads, um, we can be a perfect partner to help engage and convert far more of them and turn them into more opportunities. So the future is going into dozens more industries, but what? also going into other use cases. Hmm. Um, so today, you know, we're working on converting marketing leads into sales qualified leads, right? Eff- effectively. Um, but we, but look, when we look at the customer service world, that's a whole other industry that we haven't tapped into yet by design, by focus, but that's another massive opportunity. Um, do you like calling 
Verizon um, and waiting for 40 minutes, going through a million phone questions that, that you hope you answer correctly on the robot, shouldn't that be a text conversation? Um, and shouldn't they just call you the moment you're, queue, you're up in the queue as opposed to you just waiting there, like anxiously hoping the call doesn't drop and you can't do anything else and you can't answer your mom's phone call that's coming in? It's the most frustrating, infuriating thing in the world. I was on a uh, trying to change an airline ticket, which is also a terrible experience. And they asked me to say my name and they asked you to say the letter and then use a word that has that letter. So like D is in dog, A is an apple, V is in, you know, and I, I, I couldn't think of V and I said Victor and like, it wasn't a word, it was a name. Anyway, I'm like, what the hell is going on? How is this 2021? Why can't I just type this in somewhere, right? So it's just absurd. And um, so- I You really see the future. Uh, across industry, across vertical, that that everything is just going to become this integration of still some phone calls where it makes sense, but it'll be a, a connection to your mobile phone SMS uh, for every business. Yeah. And our mission is just create more authentic connections. And, and that's about not just to improve ROI and conversion rate, but to improve that you do that by improving the consumer experience. This is all about solving for the consumer experience. If you do that, they're going to work with you. It's going to work. Um, it's not that hard. You just have to make the consumer experience better. And so really, anytime I'm on hold, all I think about is I can't wait for Verse to solve this. Verse should, Verse should make hold obsolete. Why should you ever be on hold? You should just be getting a text like, you're third in line, call you in about five minutes. Like, like imagine if you ordered from Postmates and you had to stay on the phone the entire time while your driver picks up the food and brings it to you. No, you just get notifications along the way. Hey, you picked up the food. It's five minutes away. It's arriving now. Meet your driver. Same thing should happen for like a hold experience, if you think about it. Um, and a lot of other, you know, experiences out there, you know, it, even in the e-commerce world, it, we think there's a lot of opportunity really everywhere. You, what about the B2B side? Because you, you talk, uh, B2C totally makes sense. I'm curious, do you think in the B2B world, we could see this? I, I do. Um, and I, I think it's not as urgent speed to lead in a lot of cases. So if you're a CMO and you're looking and you're in between Pardot and Marketo, um, it's not who calls you first that you're going to work with, like necessarily. It does matter though, right? It does matter. Um, and it has an incremental effect. The first person you build trust with, you kind of get a rapport with and you're more likely to use. Um, but with, with b 2 b to c which is what we do, is we work with companies who work with a lot of consumers mainly it really matters because if you don't, you're not the only lender online, you know, and you look no different than this lender online. Speed is um, an absolutely essential of getting right to the right conversation right away. 80, 88, 88% of consumers will work with the first realtor or lender that they speak to. So it matters immensely in the consumer world. They don't want to interview three realtors. Mm -hmm. They kind of understand that they all basically have about the same amount of access they want to make sure they have some rapport and like the person, but otherwise you just want to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, if you need a plumber, you're not going to call five plumbers. You know, you just, whoever the hell can get over and fix that leak. Now that's who you want to work that's, with. So whatever plumber gets a hold of you first, you're going to work with. If that plumber isn't getting a hold of you, you're on Yelp finding the next one, like urgently trying to find someone to respond to you. Mm -hmm. So that's where it matters the most, but we have big SaaS companies and we think that the larger SaaS B2B companies um, that have more inbound lead volume um, are going to be a, a, a great sweet spot for us, for sure. Uh, David, I really appreciate you taking us through both the, the history of where you guys came from, the problem that you're set to solve, and this, this world of conversion using, what do you call it, real, real conversation, authentic conversations, combining people and, and tech. For those that want to learn more, definitely go check out Verse. Dot io. That's V-E-R-S-E dot I-O. Thanks again for your time, David. This is a great conversation. Thanks so much for having me, Alexander. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And we'll see you all on the next episode of Uptech Report. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.